If you own retro consoles or even arcade cabinets, there's nothing better than using an old school television or CRT for that essential retro experience. CRTs have a very fast response time with virtually zero input lag, no artifacting issues, excellent color accuracy, can run at any supported resolution, and CRTs don't forget were the intended device for retro gaming at the time, and games were developed with them in mind. More and more people own CRTs for retro gaming, and why not? After all, it's the preferred way to play your older systems, as long as you have the space. However, I myself own a few CRTs and use them as well, but as someone who's a YouTuber and likes to make content, trying to film footage on a CRT hasn't always been easy. So, how many times have you sat down in front of a CRT with a phone or a camera and tried to record CRT gameplay and noticed that the image is either rolling or it's flickering or it's strobing and that effect can get very very distracting to the point where it's almost unusable especially if you're trying to make a YouTube video or show off some gameplay on a CRT. Now for many years I struggled to figure out how to get my CRT images and captures looking really nice and I looked at other people's YouTube videos and some people had really good captures and I could never really understand how they were getting good image captures but I wasn't. First, a quick lesson on how a CRT works. This is important because it will go into more detail about why we get the strobing effect. A CRT or cathode ray tube works by having a beam of electrons fired at a phosphor screen. The beam of electrons make up the RGB signal that comes from your game console or device that you want to project onto your CRT. The beam of electrons is projected to the phosphor screen from right to left. A completion of a line means the electron beam moves down to the next line and draws that. This line is known as a scan line. When an electron hits the screen, the phosphors begin to glow in accordance to the amount of red, green and blue that's in the electron signal. This in effect is a single pixel. When an electron gun has completed generating a pixel, it moves to the next pixel in the scan line. As the beam continues across and down the screen, it draws scan lines to make up the video image. However, the older scan lines will begin to fade to black as the phosphors of those scan lines cool down. But because the video signal calculates a signal 60 times per second, the human eye will never notice this. For a great demonstration of watching individual scan lines being drawn and older scan lines fading out in a single frame, check out the very excellent Slow Mo Guys video. So why then when we try to film a television or CRT, we end up getting the flickering or strobing? If an NTSC CRT refreshes at 60 hertz or 60 times per second, and we have a camera or phone that can capture at 60 frames per second, doesn't this imply that we should get no flicker or strobing since they're completely lined up with each other? Well, let's test the theory out. So this is the camera that I shoot my YouTube videos with. This is the Panasonic Lumix G7. As you can see here, I'm setting it to 1080p at 60 frames per second. The CRT for this is the Sony PVM 20 inch and we're going through an NTSC Super Famicom system running F0 and everything is running at 60 frames per second. But when we try to capture footage with our camera, as you can see, it strobes like crazy and trying to change the angle doesn't seem to help. Now I also introduced my phone into the mix. This is the Google Pixel 2 phone running Android and I capture at 1080p at 60 frames per second here as well. Now it looks better, but there is still that annoying strobing occurring. So let's summarize what we've learned so far. We know that this CRT is refreshing at 60 frames per second or every 16.67 milliseconds. We know that our console is running at the same refresh rate and we've set our camera or phone to capture at this refresh rate. But there is one more additional variable that we have not considered when capturing and that's shutter speed. Shutter speed is a camera setting that tells the camera the length of time the camera sensor will be exposed to light. Think of it as window shades opening and closing to allow or block light from coming into your room. Shutter speeds are usually measured in fractions of a second. For example, 1 in 30 or 1 in 100. 
Another way of thinking about it is if we had a shutter speed of 1 in 4, that means we let light in every quarter of a second. Now the reason for either the strobe or the flicker is due to the shutter speed. If we have shutter speed that isn't aligned with the CRT's refresh rate, it means too much or too little light will be exposed, and since the shutter value is out of sync with the CRT, it will cause the flicker or strobe effect. Most cameras have a way for you to adjust the shutter speed, and what you want to do here is set it to any multiple of 60. So for example, 1 60th of a second will almost align perfectly with the CRT display. Now I say almost align, more on that later. But for now, let's go ahead and set our shutter speed to 1 60th of a second and give it another go. So now with our Panasonic G7, we can indeed change the shutter speed. The default setting is 1 100th of a second, but clicking this down a few notches to 60 means it's in sync with the CRT. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our capture. Okay, so we talked about cameras and cameras usually have shutter speed adjustments which make things a little more forgiving as far as capturing off a CRT. Now obviously the more expensive professional grade cameras have a lot more fine tuning around shutter speed. You can really get very granular with the amount of shutter that you're adjusting. And typically you can really see that in more professional grade cameras that have amazing looking CRT captures. So what about on a cell phone? The built-in photo app on my phone, for example, unfortunately has no shutter speed adjustment at all. But all is not lost. There are third-party photo apps that provide you with many more adjustments that you can download. This app that I use, known as DSLR Camera, has a slider where you can easily adjust the shutter speed around. Note that the higher the speed, the more light we are letting in, as I mentioned earlier. So from this app, we can easily lock in our target speed of 1 60th of a second and we end up with a much nicer CRT capture. So we've talked about 60 Hertz NTSC images, but what if we were plugged into a PAL console or we had an Amiga plugged in that was a PAL system that ran at 50 Hertz? What would that look like as far as getting an image capture? So this is a PAL Commodore Amiga 1200, which runs at 50 Hertz. So let's test this out and see if it works. Now off the bat, we can see that our 1 60th of a second shutter speed causes problems with the annoying flicker returning from before. But a simple adjustment to our shutter speed on this camera to reduce it to 1 50th of a second to sync up with a PAL refresh rate and everything looks good again. Now those people with a good eye will notice there's still some subtle strobing occurring every 3-4 to four seconds. So even when we sync our shutter speed with the refresh rate, this is still occurring simply because the actual refresh rate of say a Super NES console is not exactly 60Hz, nor is a PAL Amiga at 50Hz. There are some slight variations, and this camera that I use does not have a fine tune setting to really dial it in to sync with the CRT. So every so often you will see a rogue line roll up the screen. If you're into arcade PCBs and plugging in a super gun or capturing off an arcade cabinet, where it gets a little more trickier is there are many different types of arcade PCBs that don't run at native 60 hertz or they don't run at 50 hertz. There's some type of variance there. For example, I'm thinking about a game like R-Type by Irem. R-Type is an iconic horizontal shoot 'em up by Irem. And the arcade release of the game runs at a native 55 hertz which means this makes it tricky for an average camera to be able to set a shutter speed of 55 or 110. 
With my Lumix G7, for example, I don't have 55 as a setting for my shutter speed. I certainly don't have 110 either. So I have to find something close enough to this value, but unfortunately close enough isn't really good enough, which means I'll have artifacting and some strobing when I try to capture this gameplay on a CRT. But what's cool is with my cell phone app, the DSLR camera app, I can adjust the shutter speed setting to 1 55th of a second and get a quite clean looking CRT capture directly off my cell phone for the R-Type Arcade PCB. So in conclusion, capturing CRT footage can be a pain and once you learn the simple rule about adjusting the shutter speed to sync up with the refresh rate of your display and the console or computer that you're trying to capture, then things do get a lot simpler. Hopefully my experiences and this information that I provided is helpful to someone out there. And if you have any other tricks and tips about capturing CRT footage that I missed out on in this video, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always trying to improve the way that my CRT captures look. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at CRTs and how to capture video off a CRT with your phone or a camera. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. It's a little bit of a departure from my normal stuff, but I really wanted to make this video because many people have actually asked me about this in person as well as in the comments about how do you get your CRT captures to look so good? So I thought I would address it in this video. And guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Now, before I go, I do want to mention one more thing. I'm running a competition to give away not one, but two of the Pound HD Link technology HDMI cables for the original Xbox. Now I reviewed this in a previous video about a month ago and all you need to do is click on the link below. I'll have it in the description and sign up for the competition. We've got about 300 people already entered into the competition. So if you do want to win one of these Pound HD cables for the original Xbox, that's all you got to do. Get yourself entered and I'll draw two winners at random and I'll ship them anywhere around the world free of charge no questions asked. I really want to give back to you guys. You know, you guys have been so awesome in supporting me over the year. And I just want to give back to you guys because, you know, without you guys, you know, none of this would be possible, of course. So sign up for the contest below if you are interested in winning one of two pound HDMI cables for the original Xbox. And guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.